So, season two of Beastars. I have so much to say. Uh, spoiler alert for season two of Beastars, obviously, but there will be manga spoilers after a certain portion of the video. At that point, I will add another warning. First, my overall thoughts. I think that this season was pretty good, but not as good as season one. I also believe that this season lost steam as it went along. The ongoing world event probably had a big effect on the season, as I felt like the quality dropped significantly going throughout the season. Uh, you know something is wrong when you get more emotional feelings with the Kibi in town scene than Lugosi's predation of Louis' foot at the end of the season. Saying that, however, the beginning of season 2 was quite a bit better than the first season, and thankfully the animation stayed strong throughout the entirety. I did notice that the movements at the beginning of the scene were much more expressive and exaggerated than at the end. I remember saying to my friends over at Project Cheriton when we watched the first episode that I felt like the animations almost felt Scooby-Doo-like, where many of the movements were very highly exaggerated. Uh, this is especially seen in the teasers to Rokume in the first episode, where the movements of Durham and Makuno were pretty dang unrealistic. As we went along in the season, the movements became much more realistic and down-to-earth. This is not a bad thing, but just another example of how the ongoing world event changed how this season was made. Uh, if this event had not happened, perhaps the animation would have been much more exaggerated throughout the entire season, and not just the first couple of episodes. Now on to the music, which I'm sure is what you're all here for. Uh, I will only be giving my thoughts on a few of the tracks, as well as talking about my previous video of what I expect from the Beastars Season 2 soundtrack. If you want a video of me talking about each track, hit the like and let me know. The tracks that I will be covering are I'm Six Eyes, Between the Soil and Skyline, Beautiful Peanut, Jungle Theater, Herbivorous Stripper, Desperate War, Ryu's Heart, Truth, and Many Stories Epilogue. Before I go in depth into these tracks, however, I want to talk about the OST as a whole. Uh, it is pretty dang sad, and not in an emotional way. It is not as good as season one, uh, period. Uh, while this track does have its gems, it just doesn't have the overall greatness that season one had. Uh, I will give it credit though, the few tracks that are good are really good. Between the Soil and Skyline overtook Beastars Wolf and Rabbit as my favorite track in the entire Beastars soundtrack, if that says something. Uh, I noticed that, just like all the other aspects of the anime, the music was best at the beginning before losing steam as the season went along. So these character themes are probably the best thing about the soundtrack. I see that Totoro Kosaki and Ryuichi Takata are going all in on the light motifs, as well as each character dating their own instrument, because nearly every new character got their own motif and their own instrument. I'm going to start off by getting the spoilery stuff out of the way, and I'll be giving manga spoilers all the way to the end of the manga, so skip ahead to this timestamp if you do not want to be spoiled. After that timestamp, I will go back to only spoiling season 2. Gosha did not get his own theme in this season. Uh, hell, he didn't even show up. This was very surprising, as Gosha influenced many of Lugosi's decisions even in Season 2, and especially in Season 3 and 4, if we ever get those. Going back to my What I Expect from the Beastar Season 2 soundtrack video, I still expect Gosha to have a guitar as their main instrument, but continuing with that, I expect his motif to be mostly accompaniment. With Between the Soil and Skyline showing that Kusaki and Takata are up for the idea of mixing light motifs, I expect Gosha to have an accompaniment theme that can play alongside Lagosi's. I would not even be surprised if Gosha's theme was hidden in the main theme as the chords played in the songs such as Beastars. With the introduction of the Season 2 soundtrack, I can hear a lot more guitar, which seems to hint at Gosha, but hearing this makes me believe that I should not have chosen an acoustic guitar as my prediction, as songs such as Coexistence seem to have a slightly amped guitar providing accompaniment. I think that this works incredibly well and would fit Gosha perfectly. Having his instrument be a guitar fits with the musical narrative and groups already set in place, but giving that guitar just that little bit of amp makes the guitar seem more lively, and could even hint at his almost wild side that is shown in Season 3 of 4 whenever he gets incredibly protective of Lugosi in the back alley market duels. 
Now on to the big character, Melon. This dude is going to be crazy if Beastars is ever going to get a season 3. The Joker mentality of I just want to see the world burn is going to make for a very cool struggle with the Ghosty. I think it's going to be pretty obvious that his instrument will be something vaguely electronic, but I have a very specific prediction. I think that it's going to be electronic brass mixed with an EWI or electronic wind instrument. I feel like this chaotic mix of what represents both carnivores and herbivores with electronic influence hints at the black market. It can definitely show his chaos in his character. The electronic brass would work well with the already established Shishigumi theme, and adding in spouts of the EWI can give more chaos to the songs. I think one certain song will be like Between the Soil and Skyline, where the Shishigumi theme holds an accompaniment part, with the electronic brass having the melody, and then crazy arps or licks in the high register on the EWI. I should probably stop talking or I'll give away everything that I'm going to do for Project Sheraton's manga dub. I also want to talk about Yafya, or Yaya, for some people. Unlike Season 1, we did not get a teaser for Season 3, which definitely gives me uneasy vibes, but whatever. Yaya is a Season 3 character, and I'm quite surprised that he didn't get shown. Yeah, I know that the teasing in the mid-roll scenes with the wall and all that, but that doesn't really give us much. As for his instruments, I have no clue. That's it. I literally have no idea where Studio Orange and Netflix will take this. Following my understanding of the motifs and instrumentation in this season, it can be assumed that Yafya's instrument will be some sort of woodwind but I'm not nearly in tune with woodwinds as I should be in order to know exactly what instrument. You know what I did get right? Pina's instrument. I think that prediction was exactly spot on. While I didn't really give an explanation as to why, I figured it would be cool to have some sort of Eastern European music in the mix with the rest of the soundtrack. Not to mention it would fit well with some of the tracks from Season 1 drawing inspiration from Gypsy Jazz music, which was popularized by Django Reinhardt in Romania. I feel like I definitely got this prediction right, as not only is Pina's instrument a clarinet, the song itself seems to be very heavily influenced by a type of music named Aksak, which is prominent in Turkey and the Balkans. To give a synopsis, Aksak means limping in Turkish, and the music is characterized by an uneven pulses in the song. To show this in beautiful Pina, we hear a pulse pattern of 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 in the main theme, and a pulse of 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 during the chorus of sorts. While this exact pulse pattern isn't really seen as far as I can tell in actual Balkan Oxok music, the inspiration can still be seen. Because of this uneven theme, it gives a sense of originality and almost a sense of playfulness in Pina's characters, which can't be said about all the other characters. I did not expect Bokume to get nearly as much attention and care as the character did, to be honest. Not only was her character model absolutely massive, but the voice treatment was incredibly done and really gave the character life. And her character theme, oh my god the character theme. I'm Six Eyes blew away my expectations for what I expected out of this character's music, because to be completely honest, I did not expect her to have a theme at all, much less an instrument. While two main instruments play in the track, I believe that Rokume's true theme is played on the reed instrument. I think that this instrument is an Indian punji, or an Indian snake flute, and if it is, then hats off to Satoru Kosakian and Ruichi Takata. That singular song is better than a good amount of the other songs in the soundtrack, and it's for a character that shows up maybe three times and then never again. Now enough about Pina, Balkan music, and Rokume, I want to talk about other characters, like Riz. Oh boy do I want to talk about Riz. His character story progression is really cool because in the manga we see his descent into madness, as both Lugosi and Pina prod at his fragile conscience about the murder incident. While we don't see as much of that in the anime, it is definitely still shown. Tracks like Desperate War show the madness that Riz goes through as many different instruments clash. In that song alone, we have taiko drums, electronic hi-hats, a tuba or euphonium, an accordion, horror sound effects, a string section, and a solo double bass. I cannot really tell exactly which of those instruments represents Riz, however. 
It's not incredibly clear because there is a double bass that plays throughout most of the pieces, yet the tuba euphonium seems to play a more established theme, and the accordion even more so. It almost seems as though the double bass and tuba euphonium fight over each other to represent the character. This is probably on purpose, and Riz may even be represented by two instruments to represent his two sides. If that's the case, then good idea, but weird execution. Also, if that's the case, then I was 50% right in my prediction. I predicted the double bass, and while currently I have no idea why I chose that instrument, as it doesn't follow the rules of my instrument groups, I still somehow got the prediction right. The theme itself is pretty weird too. For most of the pieces, Riz's theme is just a tuba or euphonium bopping away with random notes, and it never seems to come together until songs like Desperate War. This doesn't really make much sense story-wise, as we do learn much about Riz's conscience, and for most of the season we already know his reasoning behind his actions. Having a random mix of tuba notes to express Riz doesn't really make much sense. Not to mention the themes playing in songs such as Beautiful Memory. Those songs could represent Riz himself, or perhaps even his relationship with Tim. If that's the case, then good on Satoru Kosaki and Ryuichi Takata, as giving those two a cohesive theme definitely made their friendship more lively and real. But if that's the case, why didn't you have that theme play in the actual predation scene? Instead, you play Beastars PF solo. That scene really took me out of the moment because the music playing there is a rendition of the classic main Beastars theme, which is established to represent Lagosi. This creates a clash of musical ideas where it almost gives the impression to the audience that Lagosi is still somehow responsible for the original predation occurring, which could not be farther from the truth. It harkens back to previous scenes where this theme is used, such as the stage fight in the end of season 1, and it gives those scenes a bad light because now that song can be associated with predation, and while it was used at the very beginning of the show at the fountain scene, that scene did not end in actual death. Now onto the Shishigumi and Louis. When I first read the manga, I was astonished at the reveal of Louis being the head of the Shichigumi at the school. But, and I think this is the only place to say it, I think the anime outdid the manga in terms of the reveal of Louis. Holding off until the back alley market scene with the turtle was a very good choice, and the masterful buildup to the reveal made me incredibly happy. And speaking about the buildup, the music of that scene in particular is absolutely astonishing. That techno feel, introducing the Shishigumi motif before throwing it an incredible saxophone solo which draws from President of Academy is absolutely amazing. The breakbeat hip hop drum tracks in the background with the Shishigumi theme fading in and out also makes this seem almost like a real song and not as just a track from a show. The rapping in the middle is also pretty dang cool. And the original saxophone solo right there at the end just blew me away. Speaking of techno music, time to talk about the black market and its use in season 2. Tracks such as Jungle Theater really give me hope for season 3 because not only do these tracks slap, they also show a degree of originality. When I eventually got around to the infamous Furry Bait part of the show, a song played there, which I will refer to as HS from now on, is not exactly what I expected, but it definitely brought its own flair to the scene. In my video, I said that I expected a sort of lone digger type Electra swing, but it seems as though Satoru Kosaki, who is credited in the Spotify release, drew from old big band swing and shuffle music. I honestly really like this choice, even if it's not exactly what I wanted. HS is one of my 6 great tracks of the soundtrack because of that. I absolutely love this track and can't wait to see what's in store for the other techno songs coming in Season 3. For Project Cherryton's rendition of the scene, however, expect more electronic elements. I'm making it my own. Going into some of the tracks that I haven't talked about yet, that I said in the beginning, Views as Hard Truth just really stuck out at me. I really don't like this track, and it definitely did not do a good job of having the type of impact that it really should have. I expected something almost the opposite of what came out. Something very slow with only a few accompaniment. The stuff that was shown here just 
doesn't really hit, and I'm sorry if I can't really explain my thoughts on it, it just did not hit nearly as much as I think it should've. Mini Stories epilogue was pretty dang cool, and I do really appreciate uh, the use of having Mini Stories play a lot more times in Season 2, as we are introducing more characters and thus more stories of the universe. It could have been done better, but I think that because of what this season had to go through in terms of the ongoing global event, it works just fine. Alrighty, I think that just about covers it for my thoughts. Uh, hope you all enjoyed this video. It took me much longer to make than it should have. Of course, if you enjoyed this content, go ahead and like and comment. I make sure to read every single comment that I get. Bye. Expect more music.